Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to another video. With season 10 only one day away, I wanted to make one more final video kind of detailing the best way to play Lee Sin, in my opinion, for the upcoming season 10. Uh, this will be kind of an all-inclusive Lee Sin guide for season 10 so that you guys that are Lee Sin players can go into season 10 with the best knowledge possible. First of all, let's start off with the best runes that you can take for Lee Sin in the upcoming season. Now, I think a lot of people could have their own opinions about this, but I think Conquer is far and away the best rune in pretty much any circumstance for season 10. So I'm gonna say take Conquer every single game. That's, that's the most important thing when it comes to runes. Now you have a little bit more flexibility with the rest. I think Triumph is far superior to Presence of Mind. I did like Presence of Mind, the addition of it, but Triumph is still way better in my opinion. Um, Legend Alacrity and Coup de Gras are probably the two down here that you're gonna be taking the most frequent. Uh, you have a little bit of flexibility. Uh, sometimes I take Tenacity if I'm into a team with a lot of CC. And uh, sometimes I'll take Last Stand if I'm against a matchup that's not very favorable, such as Nunu, Rek'Sai, and Olaf. I like to take Last Stand. Um, and then in the second tree, this is where you have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, so I personally take Sudden Impact and Ravenous Hunter in every single game. I think these runes synergize with Conqueror very well. Uh, the, the healing makes you more of a presence later in the game. And Sudden Impact is obviously really good for Lee Sin. I mean, he has a lot of dashes. Now, there is an off tree that people like to do as opposed to Domination. It's the Inspiration tree. People will go Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. I personally don't like this, but I do recognize that it's a really good alternative. So if you're not feeling the Domination, this is the second room page that I could say you could go with. Um, but I like to take... Sudden Impact, and Ravenous Hunter. And then for these, you can just copy these. This is what you're going to take for every game. Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. The next part of this video is going to be explaining uh, the best build on Lee Sin for Season 10. I think it's probably the most common question I get is questions about the build. So I'm going to go over some of the mo more common questions I get, and then I'm going to give you kind of my personal take on the best Lee Sin build for Season 10. So probably the most common question I get is, why don't you build Tiamat? And... It's true, I stopped building Tiamat in Season 10. Tiamat was a really good item for Lee Sin back when uh, Raptors and Krugs were more important to clear. Ever since the new jungle update, they made these, the smaller camps, a little bit better. Gromp is a little bit better, and they nerfed the XP on Krugs a little bit. So I don't feel the need to clear these camps as often as I used to. For that reason, I skipped Tiamat because Tiamat, while it is a good item on Lee, I feel like your power spike comes mainly with that first item that you, you complete, which is going to be your warrior. Um, so the first item you're going to build every game, obviously, is your jungle item. And it's going to be warrior. I go blue smite or red smite, depending on the situation. That's probably the second most common question I get is what, which, which color smite do you get. Um, I think blue smite is good into any matchup that you typically will win the duel. Now, champions that out-duel Lee Sin throughout the game, such as Kha'Zix, Rengar, Xin Zhao, and Olaf. These champions you definitely can beat in a 1v1, but having that red smite is really important because most of those junglers are going to be building red smite, and they will out -duel you in an even matchup most of the time. So into those matchups, I do like to go red smite because I like controlling the game on my terms, um, and being able to out -duel the jungler is a huge factor in that. Let's talk about boots. Pretty much every single game, you're going to go either Merc Treads or ninja tabs. Uh, Merc treads, of course, good into CC. And ninja tabs are better into high physical damage comps. And that's pretty straightforward. The next core item is Black Cleaver. Um, now, I have talked about Trinity Force this season. I think Trinity Force is actually a pretty underrated item on Lee Sin. The problem is Trinity Force costs a lot of gold and it kind of defeats the purpose of Lee Sin when you're trying to get snowballed faster. The faster you get your items, the better for Lee Sin um, because as the game goes on, you're just gonna get weaker. So I would say Black Cleaver in almost every situation is gonna be in your core build. Now, there are some exceptions. If you're very snowballed, I do think skipping Black Cleaver at first and going into a Yongwu's Ghost Blade is good. Um, if you wanna go Dusk Blade, you can do that, but I think Yomos is better because it gives you the movement speed. I only build this item when I am snowballing, and I have to be against a team comp that has a lot of squishy targets. If you're against a lot of bruisers and tanks, they're going to be building armor, and it's going to pretty much negate 
all of the lethality that you get from Yomu's, in which case you're going to be actually doing more DPS by simply going Black Cleaver. Pretty much right there, this is your core build. Beyond Black Cleaver, you're going to want to get um, either a Maw of Malmordius or a Sterax. These are interchangeable depending on the situation, once again, um, into a very high magic damage comp. Maw of Malmordius is superior, um, but into a higher physical damage comp or maybe some tanks. I do like to go Sterax Gage, especially when you're the Engage because uh, Sterax will get you out of CC as well. So like if you find yourself being the primary tank or second tank on your team, then Sterax can be a better option. But into like champions like Evelyn or Nidalee, I think Maw of Memorius is superior. The last item you're going to want to get is Situational. For me, it's usually Guardian's Angel. I think on Lee Sin, you can't really go wrong with building GA because you're going to be having to make a lot of high risk, high reward plays. And so having that extra life is really helpful. Um, but you can also uh, go a more tanky route. Let's say they have, you know, a, a little bit more magic damage, then sometimes it's good to build Spirit Visage. If they are very, very high in crit damage, then it can be good to go Randuin's. Thornmail, if, you know, they are uh, they have a lot of healing and you're trying to negate their healing. Mortal Reminder is another option in that regard if you need Grievous Wounds. And that's pretty much your build in a nutshell. So it's very similar to last season, so it's not much to it. But I did want to just kind of touch over it one more time for Season 10 because a lot of people just don't understand when to build what items and which items are in Lee Sin's core build. So that's pretty much it. The next thing we're going to move on to is your clear path. Every clear path on Lee Sin in season 10 is going to start with your red buff. Whether you're on the bottom side of the map or you're starting on the top side of the map, you're always going to start red. I see sometimes Lee Sin players start blue and it, it really doesn't make sense. You should always be starting red. You don't really even need a blue buff in the early game to thrive with Lee Sin. So make sure that you start red buff against a, a champion that you're not very comfortable against. Maybe you don't have a lot of experience or you know that they're pretty good against you like Rek'Sai or Olaf. My clear tends to be taking red, then going to wolves, then gromp. That gives you level three. And then you can make a decision to skip your blue and go get a, a timely gank in. But if there's no immediate threats um, or if you don't have to gank, then I will just finish my blue. So it goes red, wolves, gromp, blue. That's the standard clear. You'll do that against matchups that you're uncomfortable with. From there, you can make a, a gank e on either your top lane or mid lane. And if you're on the other side of the map, it would be either your bot lane or your mid lane. Now, once you get off your first gank, maybe there's no gank available. Uh, then you're going to be running to the, the next available scuttle crab. Depends on what side of the map you're on, but you will finish Scuttle. And then from there, you can kind of fill out the game. You know, you're going to have to track the enemy jungler. You're going to have to look at your lanes, who needs ganked. Like, there's never going to be a cut and dry path because it's all situational. But that's pretty much the path that I follow in the early game. Now, there is a few other paths I like to take. Um, one of the most notable is if you notice that the enemy jungler starts as, at his blue, whether um, you can tell because they leash or you had a ward or you just know that that jungle starts blue, then after you take your red, instead of going to your own camps, you're going to walk all the way through and walk to their red buff because no one's going to take blue and go to red. It's very uncommon. So if they start blue, they're probably going to take... Um, their Gromp, their Wolves, and then go to red, and that gives you time to steal a red. And denying junglers red buff in the early game is very important, and it's also really good for you uh, because you get two red buffs, which gives you a lot of XP, and then you can move on to either a top gank, a mid gank, or you can go to your blue. You get three, it's called three buffing them, you get three buffs at the start of the game, and that gets you your level three. The only other clear path that you'll see me typically do, with the exclusion of, you know, level two ganks that are very situational, I can't really tell you when you're going to do that, but like, you know, if for some reason some shit breaks out in the early game and you have to be there for level two, don't neglect it for your clear path. You should always be willing to adapt based on the situation. But the only other clear path that you'll see me do is going for my red at level one, and running vertically to their blue and gromp, usually taking blue buff first, and then taking gromp that gets you level three. Um, at this point, you might run into the enemy jungler. It's very common if you vertical jungle to run into the enemy jungle in this season. So only do this in matchups that you know you win. Now this is gonna be a personal preference thing, but for me, two matchups that I almost always will vertical jungle is Karthus and Kindred. Now, Karthus probably will start blue, so there's a good chance I go red to red anyways, but in the event that he doesn't, 
Karthus is a champion that if I took my red, I would definitely vertical and put some pressure on him in the early game. Kindred is another champion that you beat very easily at level 2 as Lee Sin. Um, there's a few others. Primarily tank junglers are weak at level 2 before they get all of their abilities. So like uh, Dr. Mundo or Amumu or Sejuani, those are other champions that you can vertical jungle against if you notice that they do start their red. Um, but beyond that, that is my pretty much my clear path for every game. Again, you have to be willing to adapt. Don't go into a game thinking, okay, this is my clear path no matter what. You have to be looking at the map constantly to kind of readjust what you should be doing. And it's not always going to follow the blueprint that I laid out for you, but it's a good it's a good place to start if you're not sure what to clear to have these, you know, in your back pocket, always knowing what you want to be clearing uh, on your first clear for Lee Sin. That's everything you'll need to know to play Lee Sin effectively in Season 10, but obviously being successful with Lee Sin goes much deeper than knowing basic clear paths and rune pages, and for that, there's unfortunately no true blueprint that I can lay out for you. It all comes down to killer instinct and knowing your limits as both a jungler and a Lee Sin player. I've personally managed to hit Masters for two straight seasons now, and I peaked at Grandmaster in Season 9 all while one-tricking Lee Sin, and I did so by being attentive to my own play. Improvement is not guaranteed from simply playing more games. You have to be diligent about learning from your mistakes and finding common mistakes your opponents will make and exploiting them. My recommendation to you and also myself is to constantly calibrate your play by expanding your limits. You won't truthfully know what is and isn't a good decision until you try it and fail or succeed enough times. I didn't really talk about mechanics at all in this video, but that's because mechanics can't really be taught, only practiced. So good luck with season 10, everyone, and I hope this video will help you on your climb. I will be live on Facebook almost every day, so if you want to follow my own personal climb for Season 10, make sure you come watch by clicking on the link for my Facebook stream down in the description and following me over there. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you later. Peace.